What's up everyone, welcome back to the shop. I'm a little curious. You ever pay close attention to that box back there? You might have noticed this box has been up there anytime you see my videos because, well, I use it. It's kind of a catch all for different things and why well, I don't use everything in it because I don't know what's actually in it. There are some things I use quite a bit, I think. Trophy, speakers, chalk, pocket knives, Cremona sticker that says handwritten thank you, which has got to be worth at least $20 on the dark web. I've had this box for a long time, and I think it was made in the 50s, 1950-ish, something like that. And on the front and on the back, it's stamped Lord Calvert, Product of America, and it has a coat of arms. Also says Product of America on both sides of it. Lord Calvert uh, was a, a distillery that's in Canada, but they used to make an American blend whiskey. So I'm thinking that's what held this. So you buy this with the bottle in it and all that kind of stuff. I think this is a really cool box. It has me thinking it'd be kind of cool if I were to recreate this. So uh, I might try to distress it just a bit, but have it look more like if you were to go buy it off the shelf right now, what it would look like. I think it still needs to be a little bit rustic that kind of goes with the theme. So I don't need to go crazy as far as making sure everything is perfect. But I'm looking at the stamps, the coat of arms. I want to recreate those as close as possible. I think this is made out of pine. Sure looks like it's pine. It looks like it's about a quarter inch. Yeah, quarter inch, maybe a fat quarter inch. The front is a little bit shorter. So there was a lid that came out. I don't have a lid. Maybe I'll make one. Not sure yet. Let me just start with making the box itself and then we'll see. The bottom looks like it is a tongue and groove. I don't know if they glued that into place. Doesn't look like glue. Ah, cool. There's a little nail there. So they slid into place and they just tacked a nail to hold it there. I'm seeing finger joints that don't look very big, really thin finger joints. About an eighth of an inch cuts. I don't know if I have any pine. I don't really keep a whole lot of pine in the shop. Hmm. I got some shiplap. Uh, this was my, my tool wall before, and it wasn't as long as I wanted it. So while I had it up for a long time, I ended up taking it down and getting much longer boards and redoing it. So I've got uh, these and they are pine. I completely forgot I had them shoved somewhere in a corner, but this is plenty thick. So if I just mill this all down, I can, I can make a thousand boxes. I'm only making one box. I made a jig to cut one eighth inch box joints because when I measured them, that's what it kind of looked like. But the box is really old and my measurement wasn't quite right. I didn't realize it until after I did a test cut. So I just used some scraps, cut it, and I looked at the joint and it didn't match up right. So I remeasured it and really those box joints are four millimeters. So that's about five thirty seconds of an inch. Well, typically whenever you cut box joints, you cut it to whatever the width of the blade is. So you put an eighth inch blade in there, you cut one eighth inch box joints, or you put a quarter inch dado stack and you do the same thing. I don't really have a five thirty seconds inch blade. So I'm going to get creative with a jig that allows me to move back and forth to cover that distance. All right, that worked, I got the back corner done. Then I went to do the front and I looked at it and it's a little bit more complicated again. There are two fat tenons on each side. So typically you would put your board up, you put your next board up against it and you use that as a reference guide to cut the next ones. But when you have two wide tenons on the side, it makes it a little bit harder to do that. So that means resetting up the jig and trying it again a whole other way. So I got them all done. I just didn't really expect the complication to that because I really had an issue with doing box joints. So I'm looking at the next step and this front here, looks like it is cut flat here and it is cut short here on the bottom. So the bottom can slide in and the top can slide in. So I'm gonna cut that to size and then go ahead and cut these grooves here for the top and the bottom over the table saw. Should be easy stuff.
Typically, if I'm gonna cut a groove like this, I'm gonna do it over the router table. That way I can stop short of actually cutting all the way through and I won't have an exit hole. But looking at the old box here, that's what they did. You can see that there's a groove cut all the way through and it cuts all the way out the back. So I just mimic that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just throw together the, the lid and the bottom. That's gonna help me to make sure everything is aligned. The lid seems pretty straightforward, just a, a regular panel. The bottom here looks like it is a tongue in groove. So I need to make sure I measure that out. Cut a little tongue that will fit inside the channel there and then uh, nail it into place. My favorite aspect of this box is the stamps. The thing is, is my box is a little bit too gnarly to make out exactly what it looks like. So I did find some pictures online of this identical box, which is pretty cool. They had much better pictures of the stamps themselves. I was able to take those, move them into Photoshop and do a whole lot of work. Played around some settings, trying to really bring out those colors, moved it over into a vector, did a little bit more tweaking, and then ultimately was able to come up with a design that would be used for the stamps. I have a sheet of rubber that you can use in a laser. So I'm gonna take this and make my stamps out of this stuff. Never made a stamp before, so uh, let's see how this goes. Totally dig how these stamps turned out, so I'm pretty excited to use them. I did do a whole lot of tests, so I'm just using regular stamp ink that you can get anywhere. And I grabbed some off cuts of the particular pine for this box. And what I learned is it's super thirsty. So whenever I go to stamp it, it is bleeding in pretty bad. But I did some tests and I figured out a good way to do it, which is stamp it in ink, tap it real quick on a scrap board, then stamp the actual piece. And it makes it nice, crisp, doesn't bleed in. That's what I like to do. I carved a little triangle notch for your thumb to fit in to pull the lid off the box. And this is just based off of some pictures that I found. And the good thing is, is there's not really a rhyme or reason and they're all kind of rough looking. So, you know, I don't have to put a whole lot of effort into it. I figure I'll start with stamping the lid first because, you know, if I mess up, it's much easier to fix a lid than it is to fix the actual box. I looked at a lot of pictures online to figure out how the stamps are positioned on the box. And what I learned is that they're kind of just rough guidelines. So that takes a lot of pressure off me because I don't have to be absolutely perfect with this. Okay, I had way more fun than I ever expected on this project. I thought it'd be kind of cool to recreate the box, but as I got into it and I got to do some things I've never done before, it just ended up being a total blast. So I'm really glad that I took this one on. If you like this video, then maybe check out this other video because, well, I think you might like that one too. And to meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.